Next block we're gonna do is called the vase, and it's an applique block. Um, it's gonna have some fringe, so we have a couple of different things going on here. Here's the fabric that we're gonna be using, and I think you're also going to need the clear vinyl, and there's some purple ribbon, but I think we're gonna put that on later. Um, let's go ahead and uh, look at our spreadsheet. So this design here is six by eight, but when you add the quilting design, it go it becomes six and a half by eight and a half, which bumps you out of the six by 10 hoop. I'm gonna be doing this in the a seven by 12 hoop, and this is just a traditional seven by 12 hoop. So here is my stabilizer. Because my other one has my, but the seven by 12 I'm using has, I'm running it, uh, I'm running the muslin left to right and this one I'll run it up and down. So there's my slide on right there. The arrows, the arrows mean top, up at the top. And let's go ahead and put this in. I'm gonna go ahead and re-clip it down here. And again, those are clover jumbo clips. And I love them. So I'm gonna put this on the top. What this is gonna allow us to do is we are gonna scoot our fabric, I mean our design, all the way up to the top. So this is a nice big hoop, but we don't need all 12 inches. We just need eight. So we'll center our design and scoot it up and then we'll use all that stabilizer or in this case, muslin. Make sure that both of your hoops are flush so you can turn it to the other side and make sure the inner hoop and the outer hoop are flush. You don't want it popping out while you're stitching. Grab your muslin or your stabilizer and just pull inward. And I use muslin because I like the way it feels. My project is softer. I find it's not a stabilizer, but it's a good base to stitch on. And when you are using batting and a background fabric that's stabilized with shape flex sf 101 then you really don't need uh, a really heavy stabilizer on the back side we are hooped and ready to go i'm going to slide this onto my machine it's on these are the colors that i picked out I couldn't decide on which yellow I want, but I'm going to do aloe as my um, darker green, clover, and then seafoam. And I'm going to do iris. And this is a new color for me, but I had this in my collection, never been used. And I thought this would be really pretty for those flowers. And then I'll decide at the last minute if I'm going to go with lemon ice or fun shine. And then pink lemonade for the vase. So those are the colors I'm gonna use. I'm gonna put them over here where I can reach them just a little bit closer to me. And let's go over to the machine. Okay, I'm going to touch my, and that's still there because we didn't finish stitching everything out. It looks like it wants us to stitch more, but remember we didn't do step two. Mm -hmm. I'm going to touch home to clear my screen. Let's go embroidery and on my handy dandy spreadsheet, it says we're going to use design spring four for our quilting and we're choosing the six by eight design. Spring four. So I'm going to go to my pocket. There is my folder, here are my quilting designs, and we're doing spring four right here. Embroidery files, I-M-P-E-S, choose your, your format, and I'm doing six by eight, and let's go ahead and set it. Um, I'm gonna choose my hoop because right now I can see the outline of my five by seven, but what I'm really using is my seven by 12. And, whoops. Because this is a regular hoop, I can stitch as fast as I want to go. So depending on your hoop, sometimes it'll give you a max speed and then it'll gray out everything that you can't do. Um, we have to add our design. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add. And the design we're adding is the vase. And there's my folder, May. We're adding the vase right here. Let's go ahead and set it. Let's see, we do have special instructions here. We're gonna center it horizontally and then we're gonna move the embroidery file down until both bottom edges are aligned. 
here is a picture right here that's showing you both of them aligned. So we're gonna scoot that base all the way down. So you can see it right here. Can I zoom in? There we go. Let me go ahead and these aren't combined. The box is around the vase. So I'm gonna go edit. Oops, you didn't see that, but I hit edit, move. And now we're gonna scoot this down. There's two lines on the bottom. I just want to confirm. Oh, yeah. So you see how the, the pink parts, that pink applique goes all the way down to the bottom line. So we're going to scoot it all the way to the bottom line. And that means I'm a minus 0 0.79. We're all the way down to the bottom line. Let me see if... Yeah, that's what they're showing right there. We're going to say OK. Don't move anything right here. If you do, let me see if I can go back to point one. There we go. You're going to separate those two. Unless you, right here, this is a grouping button. But I prefer to just group it in the next screen. I'm going to touch embroidery. It automatically groups it, and now it'll move as one. Other thing we're going to do is we're going to take this design and we're going to scoot it all the way to the top so we can save all of that yummy muslin. So you can use that on your next project. And you know if you're using stabilizer, stabilizer is not cheap. Muslin is a little bit cheaper, but still, I mean, you don't want to waste it. Okay, here we go. Um, so I'm going to go here, layout, move, and I'm going to scoot it up. Now you have two different screens. This is my layout screen. This is my edit screen. This is where you do the majority of your editing. Once you hit embroidery, it takes you to your layout screen. This is the screen that you stitch out from. So I'm going to touch layout, move, and my hoop's on so it won't go out of the embroidery field. Okay. I'm going to touch layout again so it gives me the list of what's stitching out. Do you see how those are just layered one behind the other? And now I'm going to touch this button so I can go forward and backward steps. And right here it says, after quilting, go to machine step three. That's important because it looks like we're going to skip that step. And that step, we're going to go straight here to the foliage. And that's really, really important because this step, these steps here show you how to lay down your yellow fabric. Ours is already going to be laid down. So this is really important. Machine step three. Okie dokie, let's get started. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start out with, why don't I put this taffy in? Taking the white, oh my goodness. I just hear Patrick just telling Poppy we're not going upstairs yet. It's 810 and once it's like around 8 o'clock, my dogs want to go to bed. The problem with that is then they want to get up at like 5 between five to seven. Hopefully it's closer to seven. Okay, this is your placement step for your batting. I want you to grab your batting and your background fabric. My batting is already cut to size. It's cut six inches by eight inches and we are gonna spray the back of it. And that's the side that is nubbier. There is a wrong side of your batting. Because these pieces are bigger, I'm gonna spray them one at a time so I don't have to get out my big box, my big spray box. Oh my goodness, can I tell you? I had the same spray box, I had this box and I don't even know where it came from. It was like, because we don't own an Audi, but it said Audi. They might maybe sent us some, some information. Maybe they wanted us to buy an Audi, which we didn't. But anyways, I used that same box for like, I want to say it was years. Maybe like six years, seven years. And then one day, I don't know. If it, I think it was probably Momo. He just stepped all over it. Okay, I sprayed my, I mean, he broke the edges, and I didn't even care. I kept using it, and then, I don't know, it just got to the point where I was embarrassed to use it in front of you. I didn't want you to think that I couldn't get another box. <laughs> I just loved it. Okay, try and lay this down. 
they're kind of straight, you know what I mean? So your diagonals, you know, are nice and squared up. Next step, I just did the placement stitch for the batting. This is the tack down for the batting. Mine's cut to size, so we're going to skip it. Placement stitch for your background fabric. I already put mine down, so we're going to skip it. Tack down. Tack down for your background. We are going to do this one. And you want about an inch all the way around, but if you're closer on one side than you are the other side, it's going to be okay. This is where, really where you're going to be trimming. Don't trim right on this line, but this is you're going to fussy cut to it. Because as you stitch, your embroidery pulls in, and it's never going to be right on this line. Never, don't say never. Alrighty. Quilting's next. What color are we doing? It says white. You don't have to do white. So Karen Bowl is going to be doing a Save the Date Sew Along. And she came in with her sample. And it was so cute because she did not do boring quilting like I do. I'm so boring and I'm so scared that I'm going to pick something that's not going to look good. That I just do whatever is safe. I'm a safe embroiderer. Check your screen. Make sure you're on the right step. Let's see. Oh my goodness. Can I tell you? I just checked my stitch count and I was scared because I thought <laughs> I thought I'd never serviced my machine, but I have. Um right here, this is going to be the quilting, so that is right. But um I am way beyond where I'm supposed to be. But uh, at first I looked and it said 8 million stitches. I was like, oh my God, I've had 8 million stitches and I never serviced it. And then it showed me my stitch count since my service, which I'm not going to reveal to you. But I am way over where I'm supposed to be. So I think this is the week I bring my machine in. After you do the quilting... Don't forget, it's always good to refer here because sometimes it wants you to go to a different step than just step one. We're going to go to machine step three in the embroidery instructions, which means we're going to just start stitching out the foliage. I'm going to grab my gorgeous colors. For my darker green, I'm using this, which is aloe. For my medium green, I'm using clover. Don't they look gorgeous together? Look, so pretty. And then for the lighter green, I'm going to use sea foam. Hopefully that looks good. Actually, I switched out, and I have this, which is Willow. I mean, don't those look really pretty together? Okay, I might change my mind, but I think that's the combination. Like, look at this. Would this look so much cuter if I did it in like one of the yellows? It probably would look so much cuter because you can't even see it. But I'm scared. I'm scared because sometimes I get scared it's going to be too distracting when there's a lot going on already.
Okay, let's put in our darker green. Again, I'm using aloe. I didn't want to go too dark. Aloe's kind of perfect. And this is going to be, actually, oh no. Remember, we're gonna skip two steps. So if you look at your screen, it's going into your embroidery right now, and there's a placement line. We're not doing that. And then there's the tack down for your background, which we already have down. There's my aloe and my green. So I'm glad I looked at that carefully before we started stitching. So you do have to advance through those first two steps if you're doing the block-to-block -block method, okay? So just go ahead and let it stitch away. And then we're gonna put in our medium green. These flowers are going to have fringe. You need some water soluble thread. I use Vanish, which is this thread right here. And I actually have a big cone of it, but I had it at the store and I forgot to bring it home. And um, I put it on bobbins and on the bobbins I write vanish. That way I don't accidentally use it on my project and I write it on the front and the back side of the bobbin.
don't know if you've been watching me, but I don't know why. Sometimes my screen will freeze and my buttons, it, the, you know, you just can't touch. Nothing works on my screen. So I have to turn off the machine and then I have to turn it on back, back on again and then it works just fine. So I was just talking to Patrick about that and he says we have to do a memory clear. And I was like, well, why would we have to do that on my machine? I don't even save anything on my machine, or I save very, very little to my machine. And he said it doesn't matter because um, because when you do updates and you do things like that, it uses memory. Which I thought was really interesting because I know he's had customers come in where their screens have stopped being responsive all the time. And, um, and I'm one of them. So uh, if that is happening to you, if you're here, you can bring it to us and we can do a memory clear for you. It's something that the techs have to do because they have to go into the, you have like a back office of all this stuff that the techs can do on your machine that you can't get to. Um, so I have to take it in, but if you are not from here and you're having that issue, then you need to take it into your local shop and have them clear your memory for you. And again, it's not just erasing things that you've saved on your machine. It's something that they go and do in the back room. And I don't mean like literally the back room, but like the back room of your machine. There's like internal places they can go that you can't go. I probably have about three more minutes of stitching and then I'm gonna put this color in. I was gonna go with uh, clover, but it was almost too bright. I, I feel like a lot of the colors in this are a little muted, so I'm gonna go with this one. Or I could do sage. Sage is like one of my favorites. I think I'm gonna do this one. I'm gonna do willow. gonna go ahead and put in willow And then after we do this, I'm going to be putting in my sea foam.
right. I'm going to take out my willow. And I am putting in my sea foam. And this is just a minute stitch out. It's just a little itty bitty stem or leaf. And once we're done with this, we're going to be done with step five. What was that? Step five right here. And then we're going to, then it says color doesn't make a difference and stitch the flower center placement line. So we're going to do that. You might as well, if you want to do the yellow, you could leave. This color is pretty light. So why don't we just leave this in and we have to get our fabric that's that pinstripe kind of gold. That fabric looks like this right here and I'm gonna give that a little shot of spray to the back I'm gonna leave that thread color in because like I said, color doesn't make a difference. It's a lighter color, so I'm okay with it. And this is gonna do the flower centers. I'm going to lay my fabric down as long as I cover that. And I'm going to make sure my stripes stay nice and vertical. And I sprayed this so it's just sticking down, not taping. These are going to be the tack downs and then we're going to trim them. So this is step number seven in your book. It says stitch the flower centers tack down lines, trim the fabric close to the stitch line. And we're at 19 minutes, we're about halfway through our embroidery. Thank you. 
Okay, let's trim these all out. And it wants you to trim them close to the stitch line. Every time I do these, I'm like, I should make two of these. I have so much fabric left, but onward and upward to the next project. I was just kind of daydreaming about um, quilting through the seasons because I'm going to get through these and then I think I'm going to start quilting through the seasons. I'm hoping I can get through that um, in April and May because then Mini Quilts 2 is going to be coming out. These are really, really cute. And I think the lighter um, yellow is going to be a good contrast to this yellow. Are, those are just adorable. All right, so we just did step number seven. Trim the fabric close to the stitch line. Change the bobbin thread to a water-soluble thread or visible color. I would stick to a water-soluble thread. I find that um, doing it with a visible color is hard because it's hard to clip those stitches away. So using water-soluble is just so much easier. You can just wet it and then pull those stitches out. In the beginning, I used to try and do like a red thread or something like that. Just go water-soluble. Water-soluble thread. Okay. Um, and then it wants you to stitch flower one fringe. I'm going to be using Iris. Iris, you look beautiful to me. Okay, let's do Iris. I use my horizontal spin, uh, spool pin more than I do my vertical. And the reason for that is because I'm short and I have to stand up to get to my vertical one. And that's just more movement. I like to just sit on my... Booty patootie. Here we go, fringe time. So we're gonna stitch flower one fringe and then we're gonna leave that water soluble and we're gonna put in our next color, which I am using this, which is Tabriz Orchid. Tabriz Orchid, that is next. And then we're gonna stitch that fringe and then we're gonna change our thread back. This is six minutes of stitching. Big old chunky satin stitch.
right. Let's go ahead and put in the next color, which is going to be that really, really pretty orchid. And it goes so well with all these colors. It is, with the wrappers on there tight. Hang on, let me give it a little snip. Is that even? There we go. We're going to do two more flowers.
right. Now what we're going to do is, sorry about that, we're going to go ahead and change our bobbin back to a neutral color. I'm just going to put my white pre-wound bobbin back in. We'll put in the white. And we'll take that one out, the wash away one. Don't want to confuse those two. See, vanish. We don't want that. I did a class the other day and I forgot my bobbin in there. And poor Michelle stitched out a project and, and then realized that bobbin was in there. I felt so bad. I usually remember to pull them out and I take them with me. I've never left it in there. I don't know what happened. I just don't know what happened. Okay, now it says stitch the flower center satin stitch. So I think I'm going to go the lighter yellow so there's a little bit of contrast. And don't worry about um, if you that middle part because we have another color coming in right now that's going to cover that. So I'm going to go with this. This is called Lemon Ice which makes me think of lemon ices, which makes me start to drool because I love lemon ices. And we had dinner tonight and I said, Patrick, can we go to Cold Stone? And he said he was too tired. I'll ask him next time. We really never go to Cold Stone. I, I, I'd say I go maybe like once a year. And I was just in the mood. Okay, so we put it back to a regular color, and now it is stitching the tack down. This is the flower center satin outline, which will hold the fringe down. You do need your bow ribbon, so we need that purple ribbon. have a little packet of goodies that looks like this. And you need 12 inches of ribbon, which I'm guessing it's going to be cut to 12 inches, but let's see. Yeah, that looks like it's cut to 12 inches. And we're also going to need some tape, so get your tape ready. I'm using transport tape. It's my favorite. We do sell it in the, court, in the store if you don't have it. It's just a medical tape, but what I love about it is that it rips really easily and it's super sticky. So you're going to need that too. And we're 31 minutes into our stitch out, so we only have eight more minutes. But you know it's going to take us a lot longer than that. Kind of on top of it, huh? Because we're still in May and I'm stitch. I'm sorry, we're still in March and I'm stitching out May. I'm feeling kind of good. Well, we got to get these done because I want to have clear my plate before I start um, Hello Sunshine and Quilting Through the Seasons.
Okay, color doesn't make a difference for the next step, so I'm just gonna leave that yellow in. And it wants you to stitch the bow placement line. And then I think after we finish this block, the only thing we're gonna have to do is stitch the four filler blocks. Cause I've already done my butterfly. The reason you don't want to cut to your line is look at this one because of all the embroidery. And that's gonna flatten out a little bit when I go to press it, but all the embroidery has kind of pulled your fabric in. So you're, you know, we'll press it and then we'll cut and we'll fussy cut to this. But you should never cut right on that line or else it's just not gonna work out when you piece it all together. We just finished these three steps, eight, nine, and 10. And now we're gonna stitch the bow placement line. Color doesn't make a difference. And then we'll center the bow ribbon over both placement lines as shown, tape in place as shown. And here's step number 11. All right, I'm gonna leave that thread in there. Here's my bow placement line. There's gonna be two of them. A little hard to see because I did it in that light yellow so kind of watch where you're stitching if you picked a color like I did okay so here are my let's get that thread out of the way get him out okay out of here out of here here's my bow I'm gonna go ahead and find the center. Oh, and you know what? Let me get my pieces of tape. And I'm gonna get three. There's my first one. Where's my center? There's my center. And here is my bow placement lines. So I'm gonna put one piece right here down the center. Okay, hold it in there in place. Let me make sure that's my center. Yes, it is. And then they want one, one piece of tape all the way over here on the flower. Oh, it's going to the right of the flower. And then one piece of tape all the way here on the other side of this flower. All right. It says uh, stitch the bow tack down line, remove the tape near the tack down lines and leave the ribbon ends taped in place. Okay. Color still doesn't make a difference. I'll just go ahead and use that yellow. Tack down on one side, my tack down on the other. And it says remove the tape near the tack down line and leave the ribbons and tape in place at this time. So I'm just gonna remove the center piece. Got it. Next step, stitch the vase placement line. That's step number 13 right here. Place the vase fabric right side up. Stitch the vase tack down line. That's gonna be right here. 
trim the fabric close to the stitch line. So let's go ahead and do that. Color doesn't make a difference. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that. This is going to be so cute because it's going to wrap around that vase. All right, let me grab my vase fabric. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Here is my vase fabric. I'm going to give it a little shot of spray in my spray tent. going to put this over the vase and oh my goodness that looks cute let me make sure I'm covering both sides which I am um tack down stitch doesn't make a difference either because I think we'll probably have a satin stitch so I'm just leaving that And now we're going to trim close to the stitch line. This is where I get impatient. I start trimming. Okay. Before it even stops moving. These are all the naughty things I do that you guys don't see because I try not to do it in front of you. My dirty little secrets. That's as dirty as they get. How boring is that? Okay, be careful of the ribbon underneath. You don't want to cut that because then how are you going to tie the cutest little bow ever? And if you're cutting and you feel something thick, that's probably your ribbon. Stop. There, put your scissors above it. Make sure you're not cutting through it. So cute. So cute. All right. Um, now it wants you to, that was step number 14. Now we're going to stitch the vase satin outline. I'm using pink lemonade. Pink lemon. This is so cute. Oh my God. That's what I always say when I'm stitching out Kimberbell. I'm like, that's okay. And then I stitch it. I'm like, oh my goodness, that was so cute. I had no idea. Sometimes you just can't appreciate it until you stitch it out. And you know what I want to see? I want to see other people stitch this out, not using the fabric kit and these colors. Because I want to see like what magnificent creations you come up with. I always love it when I see people post pictures and they've done something so completely different. This is step number 15. We have three more minutes left in our stitching. After we do the satin outline, we're gonna place the vase exterior vinyl over the vase fabric, and then we're gonna stitch that down. There's gonna be the vase exterior tack down line, and then we're gonna trim the vinyl. So you're gonna want your vinyl. I'm totally, completely shocked that I know where mine is right now. It's right here. Usually, I have lost it by now. Hopefully, if you lost yours, you can find it. it. Doesn't help that it's clear, right? So it's a bag, in a bag, take it out. And then don't lose it. I'm sure it's gonna be kind of stuck there too. And don't get it dirty. I'm gonna put mine on the top of my machine, which is dusty. And that little bottom of that face, that'll get sewn into your seam allowance. Oh my goodness, this is sweet. I wanna make sure it's not dirty for when I put my vinyl down too.
Okay, you're gonna put your vinyl down now. So make sure you kind of brush this off and there's nothing icky on top of your vase. And I'm gonna just put this down. I feel like I have enough this way, but let's just go this way. Let's just do it. This is part of my therapy, Jeannie. You can not hoard. You have the ability. So it's pink on pink. I think it'd be really cute if it was like another color, but just let it go. We're going to trim this, and when you trim it, um, trim, it says trim vinyl as desired. The vinyl is a raw edge applique and will not have additional cover stitches. So I'm going to grab my straight curved scissors. Okay, you don't want to use curved curve when you're trimming something like this because you want to be able to control it and make it straight where you want it to be straight. Curved curves are going to give you little smiley faces. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just trim it right to where the stitching is. You know, the outside of the, uh, the satin stitch, the outer edge of the satin stitch. Again, when you're coming around this part with the ribbon, Make sure your scissors do not go under the ribbon. Make sure you don't cut into those stitches. Oh, seriously, what would you do with this vinyl, right? You wouldn't. You would have really had not, not much. So, practice with me. If you are a hoarder like I am and you like to save all those little pieces, practice throwing something away with me. Not that I want you to be wasteful. I have a customer who uh, just buys as she goes. And then when she's done with the project, whatever's left, she just gets rid of it. Can, I mean, can you imagine? Like, that's like such freedom. I have all these piles, all this extra fabric, all this junk. I'm sure her place looks amazing. Is that so adorable? And it's shiny. And now that we're done with that, our instructions say, um, remove any remaining tape, remove the tack down basting stitch from machine step two. So we're gonna move our tape. We're going to remove, okay, remove, remove the tack down basting set. We don't have that because we didn't do step number two. Turn the hoop to the back, and if you use water-soluble thread, we're going to spray it. We're going to dissolve those stitches. So let me go ahead. I'm going to turn this to the back. Let me get my spray bottle with water. And see, I mean, you can barely see those stitches right there, but I'm going to grab some water. Hang on, I'll be right back. All right, a couple of things. Number one, let me fix my filming arm. Um, I have got my spray bottle here, and this one I keep one with Best Press, and the other one has water. So I'm going to give this a little shot of spray. I usually just put the water on a wet washcloth but uh now it says um gently rub the stitches to dissolve the bobbin thread so i have a little towel here and that's what i normally will use and we're not going to be doing any more stitching so if uh if you kind of move this around a little bit that's fine i like to usually just soak this I'll soak my um, my towel, the end of my towel, and I'll just kind of rub it on here. Okay, let's see if this, I feel like it needs to be wetter. Gently rub.
Okay. So on the other side, immediately turn the block to the front, carefully lift the fringe stitches up and away from the tack down. So um, I saw Michelle talk about using this to kind of lift it away. Because it's kind of rubbery. Or else we could grab the end of something that's not too, not too sharp. Like maybe my, um, these scissors immediately. Put them underneath the fringe and lift them out. And be gentle. Ooh, this looks really good. So I'm just kind of putting these underneath the fringe and lifting up. And you know what? I'm just going to, I was going to take it out, but. Maybe it'll be easier if they stay in. There we go. That looks pretty good. There we go. Looks pretty great, huh? So, and if you have to wet it a little more in the back, you can do that. I'm going to put this in my lap and do this so I can twirl my, um, my hoop around and I'll wet it again if I need to. And if it's not coming out, don't force it. Maybe just wet it again. Maybe we just didn't get to the dissolve away. And look how cute it looks when it's laying down. Don't want to do is you don't want to break your fringe. Sorry, my shoulder is hitting this. Let me see. Maybe I can get a bit better angle that way. And that's away from my arm. Okay. And I don't want to make you suffer watching me do this because this is probably going to take me, um, I'd say, 10 or 15 minutes. I'm going to pause the video right now. I'll be right back when I'm all done. All right, I am fringed and they look absolutely adorable. I love um, I love the fringe because it's nice and long. I am going to go ahead and tie this ribbon right now. And that is going to be it for this one. You know, sometimes it's easier to, to and I learned this, tying like my uh, boots. Put it under twice because then it will hold and it's not going to slip. And then you can tie your little bow.
Ah, cute. The other thing I like to do is uh, when I clip my ribbon, I like to clip my ribbon at an angle. And so uh, like this one, and I'm not going to do it right now, but like the ends because they're a little bit long. I think I'll probably put a little bit of glue. I like to clip them like at an angle. I think they look better that way. So I'll put a little glue here and make sure that this is tied as pretty as it can be. And, uh, and then I will clip everything because this bow doesn't have to be, the little bow part doesn't have to be huge. That is so adorable. Um, we're done with this one. You're just going to have to go ahead and trim it. I have a little bit of water soluble thread on my fingers. And next thing I'm going to do is, because I already did my uh, butterfly block, is I'm going to do the filler blocks. Thanks for joining me for this one.